It's time for a webinar, a joint webinar from WebCon and Excel 365. This is about uh, work we've been doing on remote work solutions. My name is Mike Fitzmorris. I'm with WebCon and joined with me is Russ Basura with uh, Excel 365. How are you doing, Russ? Fantastic. How are you today, Mike? I am great. Working remotely, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, look, you're hit. You're hitting a theme here, buddy. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> which, which is, remote work is the new normal. Uh, look, I think we want to be cognizant about not capitalizing on a crisis, but because uh, at the moment there is a pandemic going on. But uh, the gist of this is uh, what it is doing maybe is accelerating a trend uh, that has been happening anyway. So with or without, you know, uh, the news of the day, remote work is the new normal for a lot of companies, and it's become the new normal for even more companies. And I suspect that even as things improve out there, uh, look, uh, remote work is not going to go away. Not, uh, Mike, and you know, not only isn't it going to go away, um, you know, I think a lot more people are going to be spending their time working remotely. And, you know, one of the groups that has been working historically has worked remotely, or at least I'll say mobile, um, mm -hmm. is, you know, sales groups. Um, sure. That, you know, being able to move from one location to another and be able to be connected to the network and accomplish processes and, you know, collaborate with both their corporate headquarters um, or, you know, other reps that are in the field, you know, that that's a group that's been working remotely for, for a long period of time. And I think there's a lot that we can all learn from them in terms of, you know, how to work remotely well. There's a lot of lessons that can be learned there. Absolutely. Yeah, I think they're early to the game in terms of this kind of thing. And, and you, I, sus I know you have offices, but you're working from home today. And, and even before, you know, even back in January, I suspect you work from home most of the time, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've, my, my primary work location is from home. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've, I've been doing this now for, you know, five plus years that, um, you know, we, we had downsized our offices and all and mm -hmm. uh, went to a, you know, a, a remote model. And it was just where it, it was really driven mostly by our clients and how they wanted to work with us and mm -hmm. you know, how the technology had enabled my team to basically collaborate better, both internally with each other and mm -hmm. externally with our clients. So, you know, I, one of the things I was thinking about just the other day is, you know, where would we had, where would we be if this happened 30 years ago? You know, Oh, we'd be, we'd be completely hosed. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, 30 years really isn't yeah. that long of a time, you know, no, and, and I mean, look at the way things have evolved, you know, over that and the way well, 30 years is a long changed. time to, to people in their mid twenties. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, I guess it is relative, isn't it? It sure um, is. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, oh, so much has changed over that time. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that's an it, absolutely fair statement. Yeah. Uh, what, what I will say is WebCon is, is a little bit different. WebCon's about 120 people. And generally, uh, look, we could all work from our homes and obviously we are now uh but up until uh things got a little bit crazy um uh, most of us went into the office some of us did not it just depended on the situation depended on the nature of someone's work but we worked a lot in teams and it was because a lot of logistics were still set up around uh face to face or around shall i say business infrastructure uh, and, and I, you know, I don't want to say we were behind the curve because I don't think there's one right way or wrong way. It actually works really well for us. But it did become painfully obvious that certain processes that we took for granted um, when we all work in the same physical space 
those processes really need to be redone or changed when people are working from home. Um, and so if remote work is the new normal, then we need to make some processes to accommodate remote work. And they're not the same as the processes we were using in the past. And, and one of the biggest things, particularly in organizations that were really comfortable with having everyone work in one place, coordination and uh, it, it's not like they're going to suddenly let everybody go and not uh, care about what they're doing. They're going to care about what they're doing probably more because they don't know how to uh, manage. Uh, managing with telemetry, it's going to be inevitable. Being able to collect data, being able to use data, and being able to conduct the activity of a group of people without them all being, you know, in an open area close by or in a set of offices in the same hallway. Uh, some of us are really uh, good at handling everything with email, but even those of us that do everything by email, wouldn't it, it would be nice to not need email for everything because email is really hard to measure. What do you think? Yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. I mean, the, uh, you know, just the, the time spent, especially the time spent on emails is really difficult to measure. You know, you can measure, you know, the number of emails that somebody gets. You can measure the size of the emails that somebody gets. But when you get down to the level of start spent, you know, determining how much time somebody's spending on email, mm -hmm. um, that, that becomes much more difficult. And, you know, as we all know, over time, the amount of time that we spend you know, responding to emails and, um, you know, just to try and move along standard business process has, has increased significantly just, you know, mm -hmm. as by just the flood of emails that you get. And it, it's, you know, I find myself that what during the day, I, I don't have a time, I don't have time to address regular emails that I get, you know, most of the things like approvals and all are done in off hours. So I, mm -hmm. I've got to, if, if I'm getting stuff in emails asking me to approve a document or approve an expenditure, you know, I, I, it's difficult for me to do that during the day using email. Mm -hmm. um, but with a lot of the technology now and, you know, with, with WebCon specifically, you know, so much of it can be done remotely that, um, you know, through, through my phone and stuff like that that excuse me it's, it's just easier to move that process along as opposed to having to reply to re emails and also um you know it's I, I think that's one of the big pieces around measuring it that it, it is is difficult mm -hmm. yeah I, I definitely agree well what we have wound up doing we did this looking a lot at the way we work we, we talked to a lot of our partners like Russ and, and other companies that are, are customers and so on, we've put together a set, and this is not a fixed set, it will evolve over time, but we've created a set of applications and they're free for anyone to use. Uh, these are applications that are designed to facilitate a lot of remote work processes. One is profiling employees so that, you know, we know who is whom and where and everything else. We'll jump into each of these in a moment. Uh, a time clock. If I don't see you in the office, I'd kind of like to know when you're in the office. I, I, it, this, uh, again, we'll, we'll talk about each one of these in turn. Uh, task assignment and tracking, uh, but we're going to kick this up a couple of notches from the way tasks are usually handled. You'll see that in a minute too. Uh, policy documents, making sure that people uh, read a particular document they need to know and acknowledge that they read it, or maybe you need to achieve consent um, and you need to keep track of who said yes and who said no. Mailroom, uh, physical mail still matters. It still happens. Uh, and doing something with that is no small feat. Uh, a help desk. Need a help desk anyway, but it, it's absolutely an essential part of remote work. And then finally, procurement requests for supplies that one might not have on hand 
in one's home office. And of course, we practice what we preach, setting all of this up is being done with a workflow. Uh, so how about we jump into each one of these? And the first one would be employee profiles. Let me jump over here to this environment and uh, I need to do a quick little trick in order to get my mouse pointer back. There it is. Okay, uh, we're looking at uh, our portal. Now, Russ, I, uh, one of the, Russ and I have obviously uh, gone through this before. He's going to make a point in a few minutes uh, that's going to be absolutely right, which is we're looking at a WebCon website. And we're going to start with that, but uh, Russ, what's your favorite uh, collaboration experience uh, yeah. these days? So everything I work with, I start with Microsoft Teams, and Teams. you know I take not even SharePoint, not even SharePoint anymore, okay. and that's that's that that's really kind of saying something because my Indeed. history with SharePoint goes back to like your history with SharePoint, exactly. You know? <laughs> so. Um, you know, I, I spent many, many years living and breathing SharePoint and, um, you know, over time, although the product evolved and, and you know, I mean, we, we, it's a fantastic product, mm -hmm. the way work changed, yeah. um, our needs changed and our, the way we wanted to be able to work changed. So as we went more to a remote workforce, um, you know, things like the, you know, video conferencing, um, yeah. the real-time chats, you know, that type of communications, plus access to our files and access to applications for our business processes. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I typically recommend when companies design their Microsoft Teams environment and how they go about that is uh, there's kind of two pieces. One, I recommend that they create a single team for the entire company, that they basically mm -hmm. share everything, that anything that needs type of communications and all can be done across the company through that team. Mm -hmm. And one, that helps move them out of email because they can have that real chats and all right within that team for anybody in the company. Right. But more importantly is, you know, historically with SharePoint, companies would take the approach of defining sites based on their um, departmental structures. Very mm -hmm. much, you know, you go in one company after another and it's, okay, here's the HR site, here's the IT site. And, um, you know, they, they would then from there trying to go down into business processes. And with Teams, what I've recommended is to actually kind of take an opposite approach. Define mm -hmm. your teams based on your business processes because your business, business processes in most cases are going to go across the organization. So when you think about something like an employee onboarding process, mm -hmm. that, that may start with HR, but mm -hmm. then it goes to IT. And then you've got you know, your other departments that become involved in that process to bring a new employee on board. And, mm -hmm. and all of your business processes tend to be cross-functional. Well, that was, um, I'm going to say a little kludgy to do in SharePoint because, mm -hmm. you know, to manage the security, you had to end up setting up like different site collections and all for mm -hmm. other processes. So this gives you a place to be able to bring those members together that are part of the team that works on that business process, regardless of what area of the business they work on, and gives you the tools like the video conferencing and chats and all to be able to quickly collaborate. And I mean, we've, we've just seen amazing drops in the amount of time business processes take to complete using Teams, even compared to like SharePoint with workflows, because there's still, you know, if you have SharePoint, which has been historically what we were doing is, you know, you have a SharePoint that'll have its, um, you know, workflows behind it, but it'll have, a lot of it is still generated through email, the different notifications and all. So then you wait for somebody to respond to those emails. Well, you know, with the chat capabilities and everything, it's just, it, it just expedited the whole process. So when you combine that, uh, your business process with, you know, your, 
your capabilities for the visual, um, the video conferencing, mm-hmm. and the chat, the real time chats with a a business process workflow. All of a sudden, the amount of time it takes to complete that process, uh, it, you know, just dr- it dramatically reduces. Uh, but you also have different types of auditing capability on that, so you can actually have you have the telemetry to be actual able to measure that also, so that you can say, you know, okay, this business process used to take us seven days in SharePoint, now it's taking us seven hours in Teams. Um, That's so, great. We've driven well, that way a lot more, and I think BPS is a perfect fit for this with its, you know, the the app, the BPS app um, for Teams, you know, mm-hmm. surfaces up these individual applications inside of, you know, whether you want to use it, a, you know, on a channel. Um, yeah. All, all right, I'll tell you what. How about um, we'll start with one of these processes running from right here, and then perfect. we'll take one of them and drop it directly into Teams. I have a Teams environment here ready to go. Perfect. Uh, so I, I promise you, we will, as God is my witness, we will put <laughs> some of these things inside of Teams. Uh, I believe you, Mike. I know you long enough. All right, thanks. Uh, what I'm going to start with, though, is this is the WebCon portal, and it basically shows you a unified view of all workflow tasks waiting for you. And then it gives you a menu of available applications. Now, everything you see here, every piece of every application can be dropped into Teams, can be dropped into SharePoint, can be viewed in Outlook, can be embedded in uh, a different website. But we gather them all together and present them in one place, both here and in our mobile app. And I'm going to start with employee profiles because right now I have, uh, I, I'm here as an administrator. If you notice these tabs up at the top, you notice that there are different colors there. This is purple, that's green, that's blue. Uh, are you able to see the colors, Russ? No, I'm not seeing colors <laughs> on my side. Oh, really? Okay. I see different colors. There's a little different. Oh, I see it. Color. I'm sorry. I do see it. I yeah, see it's just the, a little the line underneath. Yep. Yeah, it's just a line underneath there. And you'll see the name of the user appear right here. I just want to get you used to that because here I'm in as an administrator and it's workflow. And we have different permissions showing up for different people in different places. And what I am looking at right now is I, I want to find uh, employee profiles. And here are all the employees that I have uh, enabled to use WebCon BPS. And some of them have uh, turned in uh, profile information. And in some cases, I'm waiting for other people. Uh, so essentially, in order to start a lot of other work, you need to do one thing for us first, which is to tell us who you are. Now, in many cases, this will actually wind up being an email that shows up in your mailbox. You click on a link and you go to the following form. I'm going to cut to the chase and open up this. So this is uh, one person named Rhoda. Rhoda's being asked to tell us who she is. Uh, And some of you out there, I know what you're saying. Why is it, why don't we just grab it from Active Directory? Uh, We would. We can, for that matter, but in this particular case, uh, Russ, how often do you encounter clients that use either Windows Active Directory or even Azure AD, or uh, what they think of as uh, Office 365 accounts, and, and the only thing in there are usernames and passwords? Unfortunately, even in this day and time that, you know, with Active Directory being around for so long, um, I, I I go into companies, at least one company a week that has nothing in Active Directory other than you know the the basics of what they need. And you know what's what's interesting is then they want to turn around and they want to do things like surface up, you know, like automate a business process and be able to say, um, okay, Jane is starting this process. I want to send it to her manager, Barbara, and. Mm-hmm. How do I do that? Well, you know, the, you don't know who someone's manager is. Uh, that's, exactly. That's why, that's why in the previous page we uh, we pulled this from Active Directory. We we did have at least that much in ours, but you could have changed it or specified a different one. But 
Rhoda reports to Mike uh, and here, now what we want to do is assess how your home office conditions are. Now Rhoda, I would say is very good, or at least she thinks it is. She has a fast wired connection and knows how to use VPN stuff. Uh, we are at least making use of uh, standard Microsoft facilities for VPN. You might be a Citrix customer or something. So this checkbox is actually pretty important depending on what your company does. Uh, video and audio conferencing, yeah, set up for that. Let's go next. And this next thing, remember, we don't know when someone wants to work. And I actually see working from home as an opportunity to introduce flexibility. Uh, so what we'd like to know is when is Rhoda on duty? And I'm going to say Rhoda works from eight till five. Now, this is something Rhoda's filling out. In some organizations, this might be filled out for you. In our organization, we're opting to let the employee make this choice themselves. So where are you and when are you? And right now on every single day, Rhoda's working out of her home office. But I'll tell you what, let's say this is for, you know, a, a time in the future where she goes into the office every Friday. Uh, so, so let's do this like this. It just basically, this is not so much to control Rhoda's behavior. It's so Rhoda can let people know where and when to expect her. Uh, so I it's an in and out board to a certain extent. Think of it, yeah, it's an expected in and out board. We, we have a right. real in and out board coming up. But uh, okay. let's, let's go ahead and submit this. Because this is really setting something up and now she's done. We're looking at a unified tasks list. So that task is gone. I don't see it anymore. Uh, I will go back, in fact, to the menu of available applications. So that is, that's the employee profile thing. And, and by doing that, you set the stage for a lot of other processes. So let's go back here to employee profiles and move on to the next one. And this would be a time clock. Now I know full well that the notion of a time clock can be off-putting depending on circumstances. Um, it doesn't have to be. And in fact, we're gonna take this and we're gonna drop this one into Teams because you see time clock right here. Uh, we could click on it, but you wanted Teams and you're gonna get Teams. And since everybody has uh, this, I'm gonna put it in the uh, general team that includes the entire company. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. Okay, so let's do that. I'm gonna, nope, I didn't wanna click that one. I'm gonna click this one, add a tab. Now you see uh, apps for, that can be added uh, as tabs to Teams. You see two things named Webcon here. Uh, there, it depends. If you have a Webcon server, either running in a virtual machine or running on premises in an actual machine, uh, that's what this one's for. We also have uh, the exact same software available, software as a service style. Uh, and in fact, that's what I'm working with today. So that's what this one is for. They, can, they so, operate the same. The configuration is slightly different. Mike, which one would you use for an Azure environment? Uh, if you're using Azure, so you're, you're hosting our workflow engine in your own Azure tenant, you'd be using this one. Okay. Yeah. Basically, so it's essentially very similar. It's essentially looking at it as on-prem in that case. Yes. In terms of connections and logistics, yes. In terms yes. of stability yeah. of infrastructure and a million other things, it's obviously different. But right. yeah, uh, we're available infrastructure as a service and software as a service. Perfect. Software as a service, we're hosting the application. It's in our data centers, yada, yada, yada. It's just turnkey. You plug it in, turn it on, you're good to go. Here, you own everything, you control everything, uh, and, and it would work with Azure, it would work with AWS or any hoster you want, or it runs on premises. All right, so I'm gonna run this out of here. And this is my hosted environment, and we're going to take just a moment. There we go. And 
now, what mode? What do we want to show people? I want a view of a dashboard. And this is going to be my task, or excuse me, my uh, check in, check out dashboard. So, time clock. And there is a single dashboard that should be available to choose from. And maybe not. Hmm. Okay, let's do this. Uh, instead of it being a dashboard view, let's go back and do this one more time. So let's remember the name of the environment. Okay. The mode we're going to do is a, an entire application view, and I will choose the time clock application. And we'll stick with uh, uh, the theme here and choose it. There we go. All right, nice. Loads it right, right so up inside of Teams. Right up inside of Teams. And, and the reason that uh, we're showing an entire dashboard as a time as a, instead of just one list, so to speak, is uh, look, this is my current status and my history of activity. I'm, I might want to refer to all of this. Uh, what we're going to do is start our day. And I'm, do, I'm doing this late. My day actually started at 8 o'clock this morning. I just forgot to turn this on. So let's do that. I'm working, uh, you know, we already set some expectations. I'm working out of my home office. And I have some tasks assigned to me. So let's punch in. All right, so we're good to go, and here's my current status. I'm working today, yada, yada, yada. All right, this isn't so bad. It's not like uh, someone's looking over my shoulder all the time, but there are some assurances and managers that may not be super comfortable can be made more comfortable by knowing that, yep, yeah, I'm really here. Uh, I've been at things for a couple of hours now. Now, what we're going to do now is uh, add some work. And let's do, I think we have some caching going on. Russ, if you don't mind, I am going to flip over to a different window. You're seeing this working inside of Teams? Yes. Okay. Can you take it on faith that this will work inside of Teams tomorrow? Sure. <laughs> Great. Let's go over here. And my day has started. And hmm, this is strange because maybe I just need to flush my cash. Maybe I, I will come over here as a different user and punch in. Just something seems a little bit strange. Or maybe I edited the wrong thing. It doesn't matter. Uh, okay, we'll do this. Oh, I know. I had meant to, to make a change here. Well, we can do this in Teams. Sorry for, for the trip around the, uh, uh, the web browser. So let's go ahead and log some different tasks. So task, uh, answer customer email. Spent two hours on that on behalf of, um, doesn't matter, that's an, that's an optional thing. So we'll keep doing this. As the day continues, uh, I can keep adding more stuff. Yeah. You can put like response to customer tickets and any of a number of things. And in fact, right. this is a workflow that can be called by other workflows. So as you do things in other places, they can automatically log things here. The uh, goal nice. of this, th this is to do two things. Thing number one is to provide um, to managers a way of knowing what their people are doing that doesn't ask too much of those people. And two, it's a way to give the employees a way to tell their managers what they're doing. Uh, I, I don't know about you. Uh, uh, I've worked for various companies in my lifetime. Virtually all of them are at review time make me tell them what I've done. Yeah. And, and that, and that's, it, it's a, it's a really challenging uh situation because it, it all depends on your perspective and how you view it 
Um, right. You know, some, 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 uh, I don't know if it's the managers that that are driving it or what, but you know that that it ends up looking like they're being micromanaged. But in the end, you know, when it comes time to you know, everybody wants to be able to be reviewed based on you know valid you know measurements. And exactly. It, this gives you the capability to be able to say, this is what I was doing. This is how much time I spent on it. And yeah. this is the value that it delivered for the company. And I, I'll tell you, I, you know, for a company that runs off of billable hours, whether it's a, um, well, you're you know, a consultancy, it's like a law so, firm or a consulting yeah. company, yeah. you know, it's even more critical because then, you know, we can all do the math. Okay. I had, you know, 2000 billable hours and, you know, times you know what my rate is to customers this is how much revenue i brought into the company so you know it's a way of justifying not just justifying it's a it's a way of demonstrating the value that you're bringing into the company by taking the time to do this and you know it, it it's it's a critical part agreed so here's what i i, I would say is these daily reports actually becomes something that can be analyzed at review time. It saves, not only is it going to save uh, managers some, some stress in terms of knowing what their people are up to, it's gonna save the employees a lot of work when it comes to explaining what they've been doing for the past uh, month or quarter or year or what have you. Exactly, which makes everybody more efficient because then the employees don't have to go back and think about what they were doing. That's kind of the idea. So yeah. I'm going to save this and return to it later. Uh, our, our forms are sort of a combination of a workflow task form and a database form for managing a, a, a record. You get double duty. And this stuff over here, it indicates where we are in the process and who it's assigned to, but you can make all of that go away. Uh, so anyway, that's it. We'll come back to my time clock later on. Yeah, so I, I, Mike, I know you have a lot of, um, you know, we, we have some other stuff to go through. Yeah. But one of the things that I wanted to really kind of, um, you know, just express for those of you that may not be as familiar with uh, WebCon is the, the capabilities to do this. The whole, you know, concept around WebCon is, you know, citizen development so that you don't need to be a developer to go in there and modify things like your forms or your workflows. And when, you know, when I first got in, uh, involved with uh, WebCon, you know, I, I was just really impressed with the capabilities to make changes um, to, to the forms. I mean, the, it, it, the whole form process, everything that you're seeing here, the layout and the functionality of it, it's all GUI. It's all drag and drop and, and you know, some configuration. So there, there's really no coding um, that you're doing. You, you can inject code into it, but you don't have to. So, you know, that was one of the things that was really uh, the, the power that it brings for, you know, like a business analyst to that's you know really familiar with the business process to be able to mm -hmm. you know take that and build an application inside of WebCon is just incredible, and you know you, you it, know it Russ, a lot you, of value. You, you've all you, you've almost dared me. I don't think you meant it this way, <laughs> but you but you dared me to make a change to this in real okay. time, and, and that's okay. Uh, here's what I want everybody before I begin. Every and I had a slide at the end saying everything here you can change to fit your own needs, but we're going to prove that right here, right now. Sometimes it's I want the application to work a different way. Sometimes I want to connect this application to other things I have. Uh, it doesn't matter whatever it is. I don't know a single application that does that doesn't change often. And the stuff we give you, we don't mean for it to be static and unchanging. We mean for you to make this your own. So check this out. Right now, I have a guy. This is what is it? This is me actually, uh, and I'm in the middle of editing my time card. You know, my my daily reports in here, punching in, punching out. And the reason that I was looking around for a different tab and so on is because I thought I had added start time, end time, and automatically calculating hours to this. I forgot. I did that to a different application. But why don't we throw it in here rather than just me telling you 
hours. I mean, yeah, I can type that in manually, but why don't I give somebody the option to let us calculate it for them? So Perfect. Let's do this. I'm going to flip slide a little bit over to the right, and you are looking at our um, our designer studio, the thing you were talking about. And here's the time clock solution. And I am going to and. One thing is we are based on uh, models as opposed to just uh, canvases that you paint. So for example, this is a workflow for managing your shift. You punch in, you're at work, and then you punch out. So uh, pretty straightforward. The form is laid out into sections. There's a top, a bottom, a left, a right, and down here you see a set of tabs, so work report, daily work report, and task list. Yep. Here's the form fields. It's the database schema for all of this, and what I'm going in here to is task reports. This is a set of tabs, and work report. This is what we were working on, and here you see task description, hours, and on behalf of these three things here. Yep. I'm going to make some changes here in a second, but there's one other thing I wanted you to notice. In terms of what shows up in the form when, it depends entirely on which workflow step you're in. So we have punching in, we have at work, we have punched out. And here we have fields that are either displayed or not displayed, as the case may be, at different steps in the process. So during at work, yeah, we want to see all of these tabs and so on. But when you're just punching in, we don't care about any of that other than you're just starting. Yeah, and I, I can't even tell you how many times I've seen this with, uh, the, I'll say, the requirement for this um, in things like a contract management process yeah. that where, you know, you go through that process and they need to be able to do things like edit the document or edit the information around that document as it's going through the process. But then mm -hmm. it gets to a point that where it becomes approved and everything needs to be locked down uh, or changes based on, you know, who can edit it at different stages as you're going through. And this just makes it a really easy way, you know, to configure that. Yeah. I'm obviously not going to argue with you. On yeah, that. yeah. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go here to the uh, item list, which is daily report, and I'm going to add a couple of new columns. I'm going to call this first one start. And let's make it a date and time chooser. Uh, let's see. Where is that? Date and time. It's called a it's a date and time choice column because there's a user interface in there for picking a date and time. And I'm going to have it default to right now. Whoops. I'm going to have it default to right now. This is actually a function. I wanted to make sure it showed up there. I'm going to drag this into position just above hours. All right, so that's all I have to do here. I'm going to clone it quickly so I don't have to redo the data typing. And I'm going to call this finish. Finish is also date and time, but I'm going to do one more thing here. Over here in style and behavior, oh, I think I have a trailing backslash. That would be legal. I just don't want to do it. I just don't want it. And here what I'm going to do is calculate hours automatically. So I'm going to set the row value of daily report hours to equal, I want fractional hours here because we bill that way. So we're going to calculate minutes and then divide by 60. And so let's get uh, date diff and in here we'll get a row value. That'll be daily report finish. And then the difference between that and again, row value. There's a simpler way to do it if it's just a normal field that's not in a table, but this is still not hard. It's just one extra step, get row value instead of get, okay? Right. So I want the difference between the finish and the start date divided by 60, we'll put that in hours. So I'm not gonna have to type in hours anymore. I can edit it. I'm not gonna make this um, uh, read only because 
I might not know the start and finish time, but I still, it's the hours that I really care about. These are a means to an end. But I'm gonna do one more thing. We know that start is going to default to now. I want, I want to be able to even do finish. So let's do one more thing. Let's add one more column. And I'm going to call this finish now. Or let's just call it end now. I want this to be really narrow. And it's going to be, let's see, it needs to be one of the choice columns, it's going to be a yes, no choice. And I'm going to treat this like a button. So let's go over here to style and behavior. And I am going to set a road value uh, in daily report finish to equal now. So if I click that little checkbox, it's going to fill now into the finish field. And I'm going to do one extra thing just to clean up. Set row value again here. I'm going to clear that checkbox. All right, so when the value here changes, we're going to change the value of finish and then we're going to reset it so that it can be done again if it needs to be. One last thing. These are three new columns in this table. So I need to have those three new columns be visible. So let's go ahead and come here to this. So here at work, I'm going to, hours is mandatory, but again, if you just want to type in hours, you do you. But if you want us to calculate it for you, I'm going to make these visible and usable, but not required. And then over here, when you're punched out, you can't really change anything. So I'm going to put them in here, read only. Actually, that end now, that's just a temporary button to make somebody's life easier. It doesn't need to be seen after we're done editing. All right, so let's save this process. And now we're coming back over here. I am in the middle of filling out this form, right? I'm going to refresh the page. And now I see this stuff. Wow. And I'm seeing one more thing I did wrong. So let's fix it. Two things, really. Thing number one is I cloned finish to look exactly like start, including the default value. That should not be in there. The second thing is this should be not just date, but date and time. We default to date. We find that people are happier with that default. All right, still editing, haven't changed anything. There we go, defaulting the now and this is emptiness. So I'm gonna say I began this at 10 o'clock and now throw in here and move along. Now as for why it's not recalculating the, the hours correctly, I'm going to chalk that up to human error and me not filling something incorrectly. Uh, set pro value, daily report hours. I will figure this out later. All right. Well, no, I mean, we understand what's, uh, yeah. Form rule to be executed on value change and it will work. I just need to figure out there. There's something I misconfigured. This is a user error thing, not a, uh, I'll tell you what, let's, Let's check one thing just to see if I forgot a detail. Nope, it's not uh, calculating and I'll figure out why later. I'm, I'm, mis I'm assuming I misconfigured something. In any event, and I could turn this into a formula so that it always refers to one thing or the other, but I, I won't do that. Let's go ahead and save. And we'll come back to that later because we've got other applications to look at. But I think we've talked about being able to work directly inside of Teams thoroughly. And we've talked about being able to modify applications thoroughly. So let's again talk, look at the applications themselves. Task management. This is the thing I wanted to, to make a point of. So if I come back here, excuse me for a second. Just there. 
All right, so if we go back here to task management and I look at this, this is a little bit more than the normal way we handle tasks. So if I, I, I see tasks assigned to me and I can open this up and start working on it. And here, this is the thing I said I had done before the, the webinar, I had put this in and right. yeah, with, with full calculations and everything. So again, I know it works here, there. There you go. I just yep. need to figure out, in my haste, I didn't check something someplace. So right. I'll figure it out later. Anyway, uh, my point is, yes, I can log the time I'm spending on a task. That bit's important. I can send this back with asking the task assigner for more information, or I can withdraw it by saying I'm not doing this, or I can mark it's complete. But here's the other thing. I can create subtasks from tasks and have roll-up logic. So I can in turn, say you're my boss, you give me a task, I need, that in turn requires me to assign a task to my subordinates. All right. And, and then I look at what they did and then get back to you with uh, my response. That's what this is for. Okay. I, I can create a related task based on this task and have the logic flow all, and the reporting flow all the way back up. That's why we have yet another task environment. This task right here, Christmas list, I mean, it shows up just fine inside of my list of all available tasks. It's not gonna get lost in the shuffle. I don't need to check yet another place. It's here. Uh, let's see, task, read, acknowledge, acknowledge at work. Let's just run through these quickly until we find the right one. There it is. It might have been one of the earliest ones. Oh, there it is. There it is. All right. I'm not going to lose it. And that capability is still there. So right. if you want to be proactive and go to a list of all your tasks, do that. If you want to be reactive and just monitor your universal task inbox, that's fine. And if you want people to get this over email, they can get it in email. So super tasks. Let's go to the next one. Document delivery and read consent tracking. Actually, I don't care if you're working remotely or working in an office. This is really handy stuff. Check this out. Uh, I am going to go back here and I think I need, oh, right. The intention was that this would be an HR thing. So I'm switching over here to Alice. Alice works in HR. And we're gonna go to document distribution and tracking. And I want everyone to, I, I've sent out these five documents to not necessarily all employees. In some cases, yes. In some cases, no. They're policy documents that I need, we need to make sure people have acknowledged having read or I, I put it here, show you what I'm talking about. This is, uh, I sent this out to all users. So we expanded all use, all employees to equal all of these people. This is a document we want them to read. And when the smoke clears and we can all go back to the office, there are a number of people that have requested to be able to bring their pets to work. Now, we're not gonna do that unless we've got certain responses in a happy way. Like if, if everybody working on the same floor says, yes, we can do it. If somebody's got an issue with allergies, we're not gonna do it. It just seems reasonable. But let's find out. If we can do it and it doesn't cost us anything, it's a nice thing we can do for our employees. So I'm gonna go over here to Rhoda and we're gonna look at all of Rhoda's active tasks. And one of these ought to be, yeah, people wanna bring their dogs to work. How about we read this? And I don't even need to leave in order to do that. It's right here. And so, yeah back out of this. And there we go. And uh, what, do, what do I feel? If I'm declining, I need to provide an explanation. Check that out. See? And I'm going to decline. I have allergies. So it tracks the comments and all along with the decline. Yeah. 
And so now if I come back over here and I reload, I'll see that I've got a decline. Right. All right. And in a lot of cases, it's not a question of uh, um, asking for accept and decline. It may just, you need to make sure everybody says, yes, I read this. And it may not even be a document you want to send them. It may just be a notice you want to make absolutely certain. And you need a, a record, an audit trail of who responded how. So you can just type what you want into the description box and party on. Doesn't even need to be an attachment. All right, mail room. Here's the dirty secret. There's still, uh, as much as we'd like to say we're all electronic and digital and all that, a lot of stuff still happens in paper mail, including Absolutely. a lot of invoices. And if we're working remotely, this gets hard. Well, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. Uh, I need to go back here. There, got my pointer back. Let's go over here and where's the mailroom application? Actually, I want to be a different person. I want to be Bill. And Bill is actually in charge of the mailroom. So here we have a dashboard that everybody can use. So if, for example, let's go back here to Rhoda and have Rhoda go to the mailroom as well. Rhoda doesn't have any incoming mail for her. There's nothing yet. There's nothing outgoing yet. But if she wanted to send physical mail to somebody and not from her house, because among other things, Rhoda might want uh, other people to... Um, like people in the mail room to grab some standard documents that we have pre-printed and on hand that we want to send them. So I want to send to a particular company. Uh, it may not even be a company. It could be just a person, John Smith at a particular location. Send them our standard document. Right now, this uh, version of the uh, application, uh, this is, this should point to a document library or, or uh, a dictionary or any of a number of the, a repository of some sort. Right now, it's just verbal instructions. Remember, you can m modify these to do what you want. But right now, we're just going to say, go get the document, which is uh, uh, price list slick. And it's the one that belongs to Horace. Uh, and it refers to uh, the sales department. So go to the sales uh, department uh, file cabinet, the folder or the drawer belonging to Horus, pull out one of these documents, stick it in an envelope, post it regular letter. No, actually let's make it, let's courier this. Oh, and before you send it, I need a record that this went out. So scan it and I need a receipt. And I'm going to assign this, because the mailroom might have multiple people working here, to ALF to do this work. Get that out there. It's going to happen. We'll get a receipt of it later. And then back over here to Bill, if mail comes in, I scan it. And then uh, I do this. Who sent it? If it came from a particular client, we'll put that in there. What's the person's name? I, I, you know, in 2020 hindsight, we may not even need this. I just need to scan it and get it to you in a way that you have a record of getting it. Yes, I know we could just email this. Email and records, not as tight a relationship as we'd like. So I might even want to make sure that you confirm that you got it. And I might want to keep images of the scans and everything else. So this is my way as the mail clerk uh, to make sure you get your mail, even though it came into the office and you're not going to see the office for a few weeks to a few months. All right. Uh, that's great tracking. Next thing, help desk. Uh, look, it's a help desk. I think we should uh, move through this one quickly, but it is important to know that it works. So I will go here to, actually, I think I've had a couple of help desk tickets. So let's open up this application. And I can file new help desk requests, see which ones I'm working on. No, actually, I have not submitted any help desk tickets, but let's do one right now. Can't log in. 
Tim. This would be a software problem. It is medium because I don't work in sales. Uh, can't even see website firewall. And then I will submit this. It's going to get handled. And I see that it's down here in my track things. Basically, all of these dashboards are what can I start? What do you people want from me? And what am I waiting for? We've designed them that way. Very nice. Procurement requests. This one's kind of interesting because like, we don't necessarily want people to order stuff. Well, we could, but in, in a lot of cases, particularly with working from home, we need an, a work from home version of me walking to my manager and saying, can I get a new trackpad? Mine is just not responsive anymore. I don't know which one to get. I don't know which one IT wants to support, but can you please approve IT getting me a trackpad, whichever one is approved? This kind of implies two things. I need to ask a question that used to be informal and two, someone else is going to take this and turn it into a, shall we say, real request somewhere else. All yeah, of which Mike, is I'll one thing I just want to say about, say about this too, mm -hmm. you know, this is a, um, it, it's a good example of something else that we see all the time that gets a lot of um, priority from our C-level clients in, and that is capital expenditure requests or capital budgeting sure. process. And it, it really, the whole thing works the same way. You're making that initial request for something that you think you need. You're basically documenting or laying it out what you, you need. You're building that business case for what you need, mm -hmm. what you're requesting. And then it's going through an approval process um, to, you know, authorize either an expenditure or, you know, future expenditures. Right. So I don't know what it is yet. Uh, I don't know exactly how to meet my need. I just know that I have a need. And here right. are things I'm asking for. And here's some stuff that's in progress. So let's go here to, I want some stuff. In fact, I might just want, you know, I might just want some hand sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great silly. example. If you oh, can yeah. get it, it, it be out of yeah. stock. <laughs> yeah, the delivery address is by default my home. And so uh, description is uh, a big bottle. All right. <laughs> I don't need to do more than that because that's about all the employee knows. Now, yes, there's much more to do. And what will happen here is Alice will either see this interactive tasks list mixed in with all of her other tasks, or she can go to the procurement request site and see that she has one new item here. And here it is. I'm asking for a big bottle to be sent here. Now, what we haven't done yet, and this would happen next, is uh, I could click here and create a subtask or create a workflow related to this. And in that workflow, I'm actually plugged into our ordering system and you can see approved things that can be purchased, yada, yada, yada. Here, this is my conversation back and forth with, um, uh, uh, with Mike who, um, who asked for something. So when I get back to him, it's to say, yep, I shipped it, or I've got a question to send back to you, or no, I'm canceling this request, we're not doing it. Um, oh, and if I do that, I need to provide a reason that needs to show up here in the comments. Yeah. But, the comments but otherwise, good. this is the starting point. This is a process that should chain to a, the real process because I, Alice, have access to our purchasing system, but Mike does not. Now, do they get an email when uh, uh, if, it's you, you can request? get email basically when uh, when you click on these these are uh, here I'll show you if we are doing procurement and we open up here in the procurement lifecycle if I think there is a if I have a question for you that then we're following this path so you prepared right. something submitted it to me. 
we're in progress and I need more information. Now this, this is gonna show up, if we move it along this path, you're going to be assigned something in your tasks list and you can go, you'll see that. You don't have to come to uh, the procurement app to find the task, you can just see it mixed in with all of your tasks. Great. Well, that's all right. You wanted email and I want you to have email if that's what you want. So let's open this up. And as the task is created, let's make sure that it sends an email to you. Done. Perfect. All right. That's, so easy. that's all that is. And then last thing to talk about before we finish off, this is set up. Now there is a workflow that you run that uh, either you create the users manually or set up uh, synchronization with Azure Active Directory or Windows Active Directory. But in all cases, how you install these is pretty straightforward. They're standard Webcom BPS applications. If you're an existing customer, it's, it will soon be available as a, an application template. You download it and you'll install all of them in one package. Fantastic. The second thing is if you are not a current customer, but you want to try this out and you either run and you want to run on premises or in a virtual machine hosting environment like uh, Azure uh, VM roles or Amazon or AWS and such. Uh, fine. Uh, run as yourselves in your own uh, infrastructure, in which case we have, if you want to try it out, we have an express version of our product. Webcon BPS Express is a fully functioning version of Webcon. It only allows you to store up to 10 gigabytes of uh, data. Uh, but other than that, do whatever you want. <laughs> Does that include the files in the, in, in the 10 gigs or is it just yeah, like... that would include oh, the files okay. in the 10 gigs. So uh, yeah, it, if, if you're using it and you're using a lot of uh, images and so on, or a lot of attachments that will fill up quickly, but unless you're doing that, it takes a while to fill up. Right. And so uh, you can use this and look, we even provide you with updates. It's real. You can use it in production. There are no strings attached. It's a lot like the SQL Server Express story. Uh, there are one or two features that aren't turned on, like OCR is not there, and uh, stage deployment from dev to test or production is not there. But other than that, everything works. And if you add a license key to it, it becomes magically a full-blown production license. So yeah, That's you great. would install the Express Edition and download the apps. So it's a and great you, way for people to get started. Oh yeah, well, and even great if it's just about getting started, there's an even easier way, which is just to use our software as a service go to webconapps.com instead of webcon.com. And uh, we are going to extend the trial period. Normally we use uh, trials on our hosted service just to see, for people that want to see what the software is like. They're not going to build a pilot on it. They're ju they just want to get the feel of it. And that's what webconapps.com is for. Sign that up. Normally it's a two week trial we will extend the period beyond uh, two weeks. I'm not sure what the final uh, decision is on how long it'll be. Uh, but yeah, you do that and the apps will be pre-installed. By the way, if you subscribe, if you set up a real paid subscription on the software as a service offering, it's, it's perpetual, it just works. You can sync it with AD, uh, Azure AD or, or other providers and so on and, and it will work happily. Okay. Uh, but yeah, trial here is two weeks, although we're going to extend it if you're using this. And uh, if you want something permanent and you keep the data requirements down, well then you can, you can use Express without ever paying us money. Not kidding. So are the apps available now? Uh, they'll be available within the next week or two. We'll make plenty of noise about that. We'll send out notices and Excel 365 will send out notices too. Fantastic. Uh, you can customize everything. You've seen that already. Yep. And so when you add ready to use applications and extended online trials and a perpetual express edition and you can customize everything and those customizations happen immediately, we think of that as a wonderful way to workflow, otherwise known as the WebCon way. Mm -hmm. So thanks everybody. We really, really appreciate it. Yeah, thank uh, you all for joining us and um, thank you, Mike. 
my absolute pleasure. I see we've got uh, at least one question in chat. Ah, thank you. Uh, uh, someone has told me what I did wrong. Um, you know how we weren't calculating hours automatically? It worked in one application and not in the other? Right. Yeah, uh, someone told me privately what I, what I did wrong. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, I know exactly. Yeah, it, it was user error. I misconfigured one little thing. It, it should work just fine in, in about five minutes. Thank you, Marcus. All right, everybody. Thanks. Uh, any uh, other questions? By all means, pose them if you'd like. I'll wait around for another minute or so. Otherwise, we will say going, going, gone. Oh, wait, one more question. Ah, no, that's just a you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Marcus. Everybody have a great rest of your day, and thanks for checking this out. We will repeat this uh, in the relatively near future uh, once we have the final versions of these applications ready to go. Thanks, everybody, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.